The game has been out for almost two months now, but the time has finally come for me to discuss my full thoughts on Stranger of Paradise, the brand new entry in the Final Fantasy series, which is actually a prequel to the original game. I think this game might just hold the record for being the quickest memed game of all time. Right after the reveal trailer, of course, the iconic Chaos Line, which is repeated about seven times, far too many times to repeat one single word. And yeah, it became a meme because of that. Expectations going into this game were definitely interesting. I was intrigued by it. It looked like it was going to be fun. I just wasn't sure what to think of the story, the characters and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, now having played through the whole game, having spent over 40 hours in it, I still don't really know what to think. And I finished this game over a week ago. It might even be closing on two weeks now. And the reason I've left this review to do until now is because I was just kind of thinking about it. What do I actually think about this game? And there are things that I love. There's things that I'm in the middle on. And then there's things that are pretty damn bad. But of course, we will start off with the things that I did really like. The game really peaks in the first two minutes. The opening cinematic is honestly one of the best I've ever seen in a video game. Visually, it's stunning. It's got this really dark feeling to it. It's really brutal. There's all the rain coming down. It looks gorgeous, but in a really dark and gruesome sort of way. And seeing Garland just tear through so many soldiers is so badass. And I gotta say, the character design is generally really good. Aside from all the main party, just because they are very bland characters, but we'll get to that later. The actual, like, clothing of them is very basic, but they are made to be customised. And the armour and all that kind of stuff does look pretty cool. But as for enemy design, it's you know, a lot of classic Final Fantasy enemies within here. Bosses look really cool as well. And of course, probably my favourite character design in the whole game is Garland. The full armour, it looks so freaking good. And I know that Play Arts Kai coming out with a figure of that. It's about £265. I am damn well buying that when it comes out. But moving from the opening cutscene, the rest of the story... I will say is rather interesting. It's a game that you absolutely need to stick with right through to the end, right through to the, the final scene of the game to really fully understand it. It rewards you for sticking around and seeing everything through because there's a lot that's not going to make sense. It doesn't do the best at almost pacing uh, the reveals in the story. A lot of the stuff is going to come through at the end and for a lot of people that's going to be a big turn off but for me who knew I was going to play right through the game I was intrigued the whole time by the time I got to the end, I was pretty satisfied with the end result. But I feel like where the most talking point is going to be in terms of positives is the actual gameplay experience. The combat is so incredibly fun, I had a blast playing through this, it can definitely get repetitive in a way that like hack and slash type games can get. I think it really keeps itself fresh by adding this job system in that just creates lots of diverse play styles. There's so many different weapons you can use. There's so many jobs in the game, which I expected there to be maybe three, four, five, but no, there is like 20 plus there. Some of them are a bit similar to others. There's like three different mage ones. There's lots of different sword ones, lots of different like lance spear type ones, but you know what? They all bring their own unique sensibilities to the table and that job system adds a surprising amount of depth and customization to the overall game play experience making something that is extremely fun to play. You can't have a great RPG though without some amazing boss fights and of course as most Final Fantasy games do it delivers on that front. I don't think these are the best boss fights in the Final Fantasy franchise by any means but across the board it's got some fun boss fights but there are some real standouts one in particular being Tiamat who is probably about the midpoint of the game I'd say and it's by far my favorite boss throughout the whole game. However it's an insane difficulty spike. For those that have played the game, when you get to that boss fight, the difficulty just goes from 1 to 100, and it's crazy. But it is also one of the most interesting boss fights just because it is difficult, but it's always your fault. It's never the fault of faulty game mechanics or the gameplay, and it's one of those boss fights where you just want to keep replaying until you get it done. A lot of that also comes down to the music. The theme in that boss in particular with Phase 2, where it brings the Flying Fortress theme from the original Final Fantasy, and almost does a Final Fantasy 7 remake type thing where it makes it a bit more orchestral, a bit more like badass, uh, like fully orchestrated type thing. And my god, it sounds amazing. But that's the same for the music throughout the whole game as well. Like Final Fantasy always delivers on great soundtracks, and Stranger of Paradise is definitely one of them. And tying back into the story, a lot of the world building is really intriguing. Like I said, you have to kind of play through the whole game to really understand it. But when certain reveals are made about this world, it kind of heightens your appreciation for what they're doing. It just feels very different, very distinctive, which is what Final Fantasy has always been like. 
every single game is of course like pretty much set in a different world at least when it comes to the mainline games this one of course takes place in the same world as the original and i will say that if you have played the original there's probably certain reveals in this game that won't be quite as exciting or shocking Now i've not played the original i assume a lot of these reveals are made in that original game because you know you're probably gonna have to understand the world in that game as well but like i said earlier this game is absolutely not without its flaws it is not without some very bizarre decisions starting off with the dialogue that is the one takeaway that everyone had from that first trailer is how bad the dialogue was it is no better in the game that was one of my worries going in it almost feels like this early 2000s forced edgy type of dialogue it's just such a bizarre decision to make and a lot of that does come down to the main character jack they set out to make a story about an angry man which when the producer or writer or whoever said it said that i thought that's that doesn't sound very in-depth that doesn't sound very intriguing that's kind of what they set out to make they set out to make a game about someone who is extremely angry there's reveals made about the character that it definitely intrigued me in a way, but it doesn't change the fact that there is such bad dialogue in here. It almost feels comedic at times. I don't know whether it was intentional. I don't know whether they're extremely self-aware of what they were trying to make. I'll be honest though, it got a fair few laughs out of me, especially when you're throwing around the F word in situations where they wouldn't normally be thrown around. That kind of stuff is actually quite funny. Now I did briefly mention Jack there, but let's talk about the characters as a whole. One of the weakest Final Fantasy parties I've seen. None of them are particularly memorable characters. No one really has real characterization aside from Jack, but that is towards the end of the game. And it's still not amazing characterization, it's decent enough, works for the story. Did I really care about this character all that much? No, not really. I think that in the future, this set of characters, this party, is going to end up either being one of the most forgotten about parties in all of Final Fantasy, or one of the most remembered ones for the wrong reason. But either way, it's either going to be forgotten or remembered for the wrong reasons. Remember how I said that this game peaks in the opening cutscene? Well, it definitely peaks in terms of the graphics because the rest of the game, it's not going to turn you off. It's not diabolical. But if you compare it to a lot of other recent games, you compare it to Final Fantasy VII Remake. I hate to play the comparison game too much, but that game came out two years ago. It looks miles better than this game. I know there's texture issues in that game, but generally... It portrays the characters so much better. This just, there's not much to like the faces and facial expressions and all that kind of stuff. You don't get that same feeling that you do where it's really portraying what the characters are feeling properly on screen. And just the general textures, the movements of the characters, the cutscenes. It's not the best looking game. However, it's not going to be a big deal for most people. I don't think people care all that much about graphics as long as they're somewhat good. That's going to be fine for a lot of people. And at the end of the day, it more than makes up for in the gameplay department. As you can probably tell, Stranger of Paradise is absolutely a mixed bag. There's a lot to love about it, there's a lot to really dislike about it and just be completely baffled by. The gameplay, the combat is all amazing, the boss fights really aid in that, the music is fantastic as well. Graphically, not the most impressive. Story-wise, it's definitely interesting, but there's a lot that does drag down the story. There's this unnecessary darkness to it that feels forced, where there is actually tangible darkness to this story that doesn't quite shine through. It's far from perfect, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy this. Whether we're talking about the story, the gameplay, overall I had a really good time with it. So with all that in mind, I'm going to give Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin a B. Before I get off here, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a like on this video. Also subscribe if you're a fan of anime and Japanese gaming. Particularly if you're a fan of the Final Fantasy franchise, this is something that I'm really getting into, especially as of late. I want to go back through and play a lot of the original games, if not all of them at some point. Maybe do some videos on them and of course Final Fantasy 16 hopefully coming pretty soon. Going to continue to cover that game as and when we get news, new trailer drops, anything like that. And of course expect a full review of that game and when it does release. Same with Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2 as well. Though probably don't expect that until 2030. Most importantly though I'd love to hear your thoughts on Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. So head on down to the comment section below. Let me know where do you stand on this game? Did you love it? Are you right in the middle? Do you absolutely hate it? I think it's one of those games that's going to have a lot of mixed opinions on it. But regardless of what someone thinks of this game, just be respectful of their opinion. Let's have some nice discussions, nice in-depth conversations about what this game is, what we like about it, what we dislike about it, because that's the kind of stuff we like to do. But as always, thank you so much for tuning into Chat today, and I'll see you all in the next video.